of the day brought to you by Panini America, the official trading cards of the Dan Patrick Show. Tyler says he's getting all kinds of phone calls that people want to rate our looks. <laughs> uh, you got to have a sense of humor to work on this program. Robert uh, emailed and said, uh, this rating is like driving. Everyone thinks they're above average. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Melinda wrote in. Dan, she's got you as a 10. As Ooh. women, Dan is hot. Oh. 50% is the voice. Yeah. Uh, she also rated Todd as a 2. Sorry, Todd. <laughs> wow. 50% of that is also the voice. Uh, no, she didn't. She didn't say that. Damn. Damn. Okay, but you know that Fritzy is going to have a terrible day the I rest will. of the day. I'm very sensitive. Okay. And he's got to go home, too, and be like, you're not that much hotter than me. No. That's I'm, what he's going to say to his wife. That's I, what he's thinking. No, I'm about. actually going to be staring at myself in the mirror for hours. No, no, tonight. you're going to go. That's to not going to help. You're going to go to your wife, and you're going to go. What would you rate me? Hon? Because if you look at Todd's comments from before, he wasn't upset that uh, like people were like, "Wow, your wife is really good looking." It was that she was so much better looking than him, and he's like, "I'm not that bad looking. Yeah. I'm not that. What the hell? She's not that much hotter than me." Yeah, I made it about me for a change. <laughs> and this is the wrong guest to have on right after this. Oh, conversation. this guy. Yeah, this Mark. Guy. Mark Sanchez joining us on the program. On yeah, uh, Mark, how would you uh, rate yourself? <laughs> oh, no. I'm obviously not Big E, wherever he's from, my man. Who said a truckload of it? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. I got That's the uh, truck driver from uh, Indiana. Yeah, one of our callers. Dude, so. I'm obviously not Big E. No, um, no. Who is? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, but this is really funny, and I feel bad for Fritzy, man. No, don't. No, don't. I got a five and a two. Yeah. These are some of the numbers we're throwing around. Yeah. Add them together, big guy. Yeah, that's right. Together. There you go. <laughs> Mark's got my back. All right. Uh, so Mark Sanchez, Fox NFL analyst, former NFL USC quarterback here. All right. We asked this question yesterday. Will Josh Allen win a Super Bowl in his career? Yes. I I absolutely think so. I think um, I saw the whole – debate yesterday with Orlovsky, with Ryan Clark, with Rex. Uh, I saw it with Shannon and, and, and all these guys and this narrative that's coming out, like Josh didn't play well enough yesterday or Sunday to win. I, I can't subscribe to that. I just can't. I, I, I think he played well enough to win. Look at, um, you know, I, I thought Ryan Clark made a really good point um, about when you go get that gold jacket, and when you give your acceptance speech, whatever, like the person presenting you doesn't have to say much. But everybody in the crowd, when they look at Tom Brady, is going to remember the Julian Edelman catch, some big kicks by Vinatieri, some amazing throws by Tom Brady, amazing reads, amazing deliveries, diving catches by Gronkowski, uh, defensive stops and interceptions that put him in a good place. And he took advantage of it. Yes, he's the trigger man. Yes, he's the guy. And he's going to get all the blame and all the praise, and that's the way it goes. But this notion that Josh didn't play well enough, that's just crazy to me. I mean, he played well enough to win twice now and got let down by the rest of the team. And he wore it, just wore it on the chin, no yeah. problem. And he wore it on the chin early in the year when he wasn't taking care of the football. And people said, oh, he's trying to be Superman. He needs to just chill and run the system and then pick your spots to make your big plays. Well, that's what he did, and now he didn't play well enough. So that I, I just don't like the the double standard there. And then somebody made the point about um, you know Patrick Mahomes. We wouldn't be saying this about Patrick. We'd be saying he didn't play well. That's not true. We said his guys have been dropping the ball all year. So th that one, that one, I, I have a hard time stomaching that. I think he just he needs a little help. He's got a guy walked into his lap. His left tackle who's battling in the game. He gets walked into his lap, affects the throw. Three huge drop passes. Uh, and how about Cooks? He uh, Cook, he makes up for the drop to Cook that's a walk-in touchdown yeah. on the halfback angle before halftime, so he runs it in himself. Like, don't tell me Josh didn't play well. Come on, man, that's crazy. Um, so, I, I don't know. I, I think he's a heck of a player. I think he's going to be just fine. They just – in those positions, I mean, they were decimated at linebacker. Their defense – Kansas City walked the ball up. At, they had five third downs, Dan. Five third downs? Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's how well they were moving the ball on first and second down. You don't even need third down. That's a quarterback's dream. That is like, it's easy. I, I don't know. That's wild to me. Against a really good defense, so I don't know. Help me understand the drama with the Cowboys, with C.D. Lamb Oof. and Dak Prescott, and relatives are now involved in this. 
that it yeah. feels like CD's mom criticizing Dak and Dak's brother criticizing CD. And uh, how do you how do you bring that, you know, some closure? So you already have enough drama because you play for the Cowboys. But that, that's that, bad. that was going to be my first point. That was going to be my first point. So that goes. Um, oh, man, it, it's not inherently good or bad. This this spotlight that comes with being a cowboy and wearing the star, okay, and being the quarterback there. Ask Tony Romo. But it's like fire. Fire isn't inherently good or bad. It can warm you, it can cook your food, and it can burn down your whole damn village. So how do you use this fire? How do you use this spotlight? How do you, um, um, how do you take advantage of it? And how do you handle the negative parts of it and, and create barriers or, or safety measures so that you don't get burned? by this white hot spotlight well the family on twitter which is the you know bathroom wall of the internet anybody can say anything you know <laughs> like come on for a good time call big e and then put his phone number in there you know what i mean like you can put anything on there that's ridiculous so now that the families are involved it's just taking us to like this other level of i mean do we need to all sit down in the living room and not know why they're there and then somebody walks in and is like we're all here because we love each other yeah like, but 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 the, we have the- kevin burkhart said there was something that was tangible there was tension going on in that game between these two you could you could see it on tv it was so it was like Dak had to force him the ball later in the game and they got off to a weird start um, listen, I've been there where you're just off with a player and had nothing to do with off the field stuff, but just you're off. He went to 10 yards. I thought he was going to be at nine, you know, uh, based on the leverage or coverage or whatever. I thought he was going to break at this route or whatever, this depth or this move, or that showed me this. And we just kind of are off. And I'd literally go to the coordinator and say, Hey, just hand him the ball, snap him the ball, give him, put in the reverse to him, whatever, throw him just a quick ball just to get back in rhythm. You know what I mean? Just let's just get on the same page and then we'll figure out the rest of it. Um, and, and, you know, put one good de- positive deposit in the in the bank. It, it was just it really was tangible, palpable through the TV. So I can only imagine what it felt like at the game. Yeah. But it just looked off. And now you got family members like perpetuating this thing. It, it's just I don't understand that. I, I know. And the, the point is. The good thing is the family cares, right? They're one, the family's around, two, they care. So, like, let's say something positive about it, but three, okay, you got to understand what these comments mean to other people and how, like, it's hard enough to win a game. It's hard enough to convert a third down to, to get a scoring drive orchestrated. But now you're going to, you know, throw shade at the guy trying to give your kid the ball or you're like, it just doesn't help anybody, and and it's really too bad. You know, it's it's a good thing that that these mediums and and um, um, you know forms of media like exist for people to get their talent out there and opinions out there, and there's some good stuff you can get from it, but also there's some negative that comes with it too, and it's and it's really too bad for that team to even have to th- like how do you even start talking about that? All I want to do is we just want to go win games. You know, that, that stuff. I don't got time for that. If you're Kansas City, can you? Try to make Lamar Jackson either a passer or a runner. Like, can you, can you make you? I mean, your goal is to make him one dimensional. I'm, I'm guessing, but it doesn't really work. Yeah. But what would be your mindset, Kansas City's well, defense he's gotten, approach? He's gotten better as a passer, which is the problem for defenses. And even since his MVP year, his MVP year was much more of the scrambling, the wild plays. The you know, it looks like a Madden football game because he's so dang talented. Now he's starting, especially in that second half last week, he's starting to get to a place where people never knew he could get to, meaning drop back, you know, 10 to 15 times a game, go through your first couple reads and get to three, four, and five with a quick little pocket movement. That, that's the NFL. You know what I mean? Good teams, good defense will force you to do that. So in my opinion, the best you can keep the clamps on the run game and his, he's going to get a couple, right? You're playing Jordan, you're playing LeBron, you're playing Kobe. He's, they're going to get some, you got to do your best to just mitigate that and try and take away one of his best targets. Try and, you know, force Mark Andrews out of the game, you know, control Zay Flowers, pick one of them, 
and make somebody else beat you. And then that, that's going to be your formula to win. Essentially, if they do these things, if he drops back 15 times and gets to his third read, you know, 12 of those times and completes those balls on our defense, he deserves to win the game. And that's what Chris Jones, I need a play. I need one play. You know what I mean? Uh, these guys up front, Tranquil, who I love. McDuffie, come on now. This is your game. The second year, dude, I love – he was an all-pro as a nickel. Are you kidding me? This McDuffie kid is a baller, man. I love him. Um, you know, like one of those guys, you got to make the game-changing play without doing anything outside of our system. One's going to come your way. you got to capitalize on it, and, and that's what I would try and do. Force him to drop back 15 times, convert these third downs, go on long drives, converting third downs on those – multiple third downs on those drives with his arm, and see if he can do it. And if he can do it, he deserves a win. If the Bears called you and asked you what to do with the number one overall pick. Oh, boy. You know what? We, we're going to have to do this one. I need to go watch it. And and here's the other thing. I mean, you see the USC stuff in my deal. Like, that's, you know, I love my school. I love, uh, you Do you know, want to do this all, in a everything month? Everything about it. Do you want to wait a month? Yeah, because I got to go. I got to go really grind on these guys. I got to figure out, like, what um, pause. I got to go grind on their film. And uh, figure out who I would legitimately take. No, no. But, but you did uh, no pause. Bias. You did pause. You did pause a while there. So what makes you nervous about Caleb Williams? No, I, I just because I don't want to say yes. I would go Caleb Williams, or I would go uh, Drake May, or I would go anybody without really watching. I've been to two of Caleb Williams' games. They were against San Jose State and maybe Nevada. So it's not a real okay. good. Would you move Sample on from size. Justin Fields? Would you move on from Justin Fields? Once again, formula to win. Could I come up with a formula for him to win? Heck yes. It's going to be a lot more design runs. It's going to be a little more of the earlier Lamar Jackson stuff until I can get him to a place where he's going to be one of those, not necessarily, he's never going to be a pure dropback passer. That's not yeah. a game because you're kind of taking away his stinger if you do that to him. I think you can get him to a place and in a system that has the proper structure to where look at Kyler Murray towards the end of the season. He's not running nearly as much. Lamar Jackson, not running nearly as much. Um, you know, there's players that you can, that you can um, teach and mold. Uh, look at uh, Mahomes even. I mean, that's a, that's a structured system. And he learned from a drop back guy in Alex Smith his first year and saw how it happens. Now when it's time to move around, I mean, there's nobody better and you let him use his instincts and, and, go beat the other team and you're not necessarily beating scheme at that point you're beating players it's a player beating a player not defeating a scheme the scheme was right the defense had you had you you know nailed down you were done there's there was nowhere to go but you make a play and that's where you kind of get over the hump with justin and just keep continuing to groom him but once again that is arguably and i played in new york that that might be just tough if not tougher to play there that is a rough media market man they are they are on you. I mean, it is um, – at least New York, you get a little bit of of um, deflection with Giants and Jets. You got two teams there that can take a little bit of, of the blow for you. But Chicago, man, it's uh, – and they're starving for for a winning team right now. So it's uh, that's a tough place. But, yes, in a month, I will have a full breakdown on the QBs for you. All right, quickly before we uh, say goodbye, how does this weekend play out? <laughs> as much as I want the Lions to win – just just because of the story like the memes about this game have you seen the the Eminem rolling up in eight mile and that's Jared Goff rolling up to the game with the Lions like that one killed me <laughs> that one was so funny to me um I just you know that's the feel-good story they're going on the road like that is a tough group and and Dan Campbell said this is what the team's going to be and everybody kind of laughed at them and wrote them off and they're in a smaller market so whatever I mean can you imagine those guys in the Super Bowl? That place would not. I mean, the whole city of Las Vegas is going to be all of Detroit. Like, yep. um, so that I just don't know if they can do it there. I think the 49ers, the big thing for the Niners, they got they to gotta pressure Goff, man. Where, where are these guys up front? The Bosa's, the Armsteads, the True. Hargraves. You, you picked up uh, Young. Randy Gregory. You picked up uh, Chase Young. I mean, that is a star-studded cast there, like, Where's I need some production out of those guys. I need at least three from you guys, right? Like, and a couple tip balls. Eric Armstead's like a redwood tree, man. He's massive. So that guy's got to affect the game. They got to shut down Gibbs. I think Sam Fran has the advantage. Um, and then 
you know, this is the year. This is the year the Bills should have caught KC. This is the year that that Lamar Jackson's got to handle his business at home. Once again, he played an excellent second half. And you could tell he took over that thing. So yeah. I, I could see Sam Fran and, and Baltimore handling this thing. You never want to bet against Mahomes, and I might regret it. But uh, if I got a pick, I'll go Sam Fran Baltimore. Great to talk to you. We'll have you back in a month, and then you could tell us what you think Chicago should do. Tell you who I'm drafting. I right, love bro. it. All right. That's Mark Sanchez, Fox NFL analyst, former NFL and USC quarterback.